morning, Sunrise family. We're so happy you're joining us. You may even be with some extra family members from Thanksgiving. We hope that you guys had a wonderful time with your families and friends. And we just want you to join us in worship today.
Amen. This week as we celebrate Thanksgiving, um, I was thinking about how it's so easy to be thankful for the things that bring us joy, the things that make us happy, the things that make our lives easier, more comfortable. We can often thank God for all of our blessings. But I wonder how many of us thank God for our trials. How many of us thank him for his discipline? In Hebrews 12, it talks about how God disciplines us so that we might share in his holiness and how no discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful, but afterward there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. You think about how many of us thank our parents for stopping us from running in the middle of the street or not playing with fire. God's discipline is like that. It's protective. He loves us so much, he wants to keep us from getting hurt. So as we go into this next song and we sing about running back to God, resurrending our lives to him, we just pray that we would be a people that could not only thank God for all the many blessings, but also for the times when things don't go as we hope that they would, or the times where we experience his correction. Lord, help us to be refined and to be seen holy in your eyes.
so good to us even when we don't deserve it you always make a way your word says that you're the same God as you were in the Bible today and we call upon you Lord to just renew us in this place We worship you and we're so 
thankful for who you are, God. Help us, Lord, to see your presence, to experience you in our day-to-day lives. Help us, God, to be sure that even when it doesn't seem like it, even when we can't see it, that you're working everything out for the good of all those that are called your children. And we thank you for the privilege and the honor to be called your child. For everyone watching this service today, God, we pray that you would touch them. You know what each heart needs. And I just pray that we would all receive according to your will and in accordance with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow, guys, that was some amazing worship. Hey, if you were interested in giving, we have three ways to do that for your financial worship. You can give online, over the mail, or with the text number 84321. Now, on to Ron. Thanks, Matt, and thank you, worship team, for another awesome worship set as always. Welcome to Sunrise Community Fellowship. I'm Pastor Ron, and we are blessed to have our Sunrise family from coast to coast and beyond join us for worship today. Today we're going to talk about being thankful, and I really hope that everyone out there had an amazing Thanksgiving, filled with the love and joy of family and friends. Thanksgiving is supposed to be that one time a year that our nation literally stops to give thanks for the blessings that we've received this past year. Our leaders thought it was so important and critical to give God thanks for His favor on this nation. And yet, in today's culture and society, Thanksgiving has lost its purpose and has become for some just another hallmark holiday overshadowed by the consumerism of Black Friday. In fact, right after you chow down your your turkey and your stuffing, you can go out and get an early start on your Christmas shopping. It's great, right? It's awesome. But is it? Is it really? Americans were blessed and given time off to give thanks. It's even a federal holiday. But instead, somewhere we lost our way. Instead, we focus on the things of this world. And I have to be honest, I have an issue with thanksgiving. I have a struggle. It is that I believe every day we should be giving God thanks for all that he provides. Not just once a year. Not just when things are going great. But every day and every night. I've struggled with being around people who have no hope and hence have no joy in their lives. I often can't even understand what that's like anymore. You see, for me... Each day is a bonus because God has shown me mercy and grace. He saved me from myself when I had given up, when I lost hope, when I was ready to check out. He changed my heart and saw within me I was worth saving. And when he changed my heart, I realized that life was worth living. He protected me in the face of my enemies, in the defense of our nation. And he rescued me from nature's fury. of those times the logic of this world 
says that I should be dead. Three times over. And yet, God's grace defies that logic. God's grace has me standing right here, right now. And I only am here because of the grace of God. So today is a bonus day for me. And each and every day of my life, I live on bonus time. And because every day is bonus time, there's been a prayer that's convicted me and uh, hit my heart in a way that I have to get on my knees and pray. And here's how it goes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for today and the grace you shower upon me every day of my life. I know that I don't deserve anything I receive from you, and yet you give me all these blessings in advance. I am so weak, and I fail you so often, but your grace, your grace is endless, and I know that without your will, I can do nothing. Your mercy makes me feel so grateful and loving, not only for you, Lord, but for all those you place in my path. Your providence brings joy to all the situations of my life. Lord, you are the only source of grace. So make me an instrument of your will. I pray this in your precious name, the name of Jesus. Amen. But what if, what if you don't live in bonus time? What if we haven't recognized God's providence in our lives? Then, in today's climate, we might ask ourselves, what do we have to be thankful about? What do we have to be thankful for? So let's start with the things, people, or events that bring us joy. Joy. Let's think back to those moments of joy. Those moments where everything seemed like a blessing. How did you feel? Were you thankful in those moments? Or did you just let them pass by? You see, friends... Joy is the key to opening our eyes to being thankful every day. The word joy occurs 181 times in the Bible, and the theme of thanksgiving is woven like a golden ribbon throughout the fabric of Scripture. God wants us to be joyful, and let's face it, we want to be joyful. But let me ask, what brings God joy? Are we what bring God joy? And if so, how can that be possible? You see, God wants to hear our doubts, fears, and questions, but He especially desires our praise. He seeks those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. So let's look at what Scripture actually says about showing thanks and praise to God. We begin with Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Biblical prayer is always girded up and surrounded with gratitude. We're to enter His gates with thanksgiving. We are to enter the gates of heaven, going face to face with our Lord, filled with hearts of thanksgiving. 
which is the spirit of prayer, the very breath of prayer, if we would simply learn to say thank you with a smile for all the favors done for us, especially saying thank you to God for every blessing provided to us, it would give us a whole new brand spanking new entire outlook on each and every day that we breathe the air. Nothing brightens life like the spirit of thanksgiving. Let's continue with Psalm 92 verses 1 and 2. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. A day that begins and ends in prayer and praise won't become unraveled. As believers, let's look back at our bad days. And let's ask ourselves, Did that day begin with intentionality to connect with God in prayer? Or did we not have time? Something, we were running late, we were in a hurry, or we just chose not to make time for God. Look back at those bad days those hard days, those difficult days that you actually began the day with prayer? Did God keep you centered? Did God carry you through your struggle and bring you on to the other side? I know the answer to that. And so do you. Let's continue with Romans chapter 14, verse 6. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and give God thanks. You see, we can also praise God every time we sit down to the table and eat. For some of us, that may be three times a day. For some of us, it may be six. But whatever it is, it is an opportunity to stop, be still, and be thankful. It is a silent reminder to those around us and a visible reminder to all of us that every good and perfect gift comes from our Father above. Let's continue with Colossians chapter 3, verses 15. And, 17. and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. As believers nestled in the middle of the comparison of our lives before salvation and what our lives after salvation should be like is the simple command to be thankful. You see, thankfulness is a sign of a changed life. It is the mark of a mature believer. Even in the simple things, we should be thankful. Don't reserve your praise to God for the big things that occur in our lives. Recognize instead that God is the giver of all good gifts in our lives, whether they're great or whether they're small. According to Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, we're to thank God in every word and every deed. And whatever you do in the word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Speak every word in gratitude. And do everything with a thankful heart, with a thankful spirit. Whenever we awaken in the morning or retire at night, if we're sleepless at midnight, 
whenever we eat, every time we pray, and in all of our words and deeds, all of these should be tinged with the thanksgiving the way the morning sky is tinged with crimson. The beauty of that morning sky does not compare to the blessings that God showers upon us. And finally, we have 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, which says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. God's will is for us to be thankful. Paul tells the Thessalonian believers that God's will for them is to be full of thanksgiving. We want our children to show gratitude to us and to others. So it should not be surprising that God wants the same thing from us. It's not what our children are taught, but rather what is caught. So if you live a life of thanksgiving, your children will catch on to that and they will be thankful as well. But if not, no matter how much you tell them to be thankful, they'll never truly understand what it means because our example is the one that shapes it for them. So we come to the so what, so what excuse me, part of my sermon. What does this mean? Why is it important? You see, we need to give thanks at all times, both now and in eternity. As we heard in Ephesians 5, we're told that when the Spirit of God fills our lives, we'll be thankful to God in all present situations. And here's the capstone. Here's the bottom line. That's what we'll be doing throughout eternity. In these passages from Scripture, we learn what it means to be thankful every day. We learn that we need to be thankful now and through eternity. An eternity granted to us through the sacrifice of of Jesus Christ. You see, thanksgiving is not going to end when heaven begins. Praise and thanksgiving just go on and out into our future. We won't have a thanksgiving day in eternity because every day will be thanksgiving. Every time we see our Lord and every time we think of our redemption, we will just break out into praise and thanksgiving. Think about it. We're going to fill heaven's corridors with the sounds of praise and thanksgiving throughout the endless, joyous, never-ending eons of eternity. Psalm 89 verse 1 says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. So what's the action that we need to take? How do we learn to make Thanksgiving every day? What can we do about it right now, today? Learn a praise verse. Teach it to your children. Share it with your friends. Practice it. And begin giving the Lord real praise and genuine thanksgiving every morning and night, whether you're awake, at every meal, with every word and deed, whenever you pray at all times, now and forever. We want God to know we adore Him. And we were not compelled to that, but came to that because of His boundless love, boundless grace, boundless mercy, 
and his providence in our lives. As we go out into the world that seeks to rob us of our thankfulness, let's challenge ourselves to say, Lord, let thankfulness flow from my heart. Let's say that again. Lord, let thankfulness flow from my heart. My friends, come, praise the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name forever. Let us never forget all the blessing he bestows upon us and the precious gift of salvation he freely gives us, paid for with his death on the cross. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you provide for us even though we don't deserve it. You granted us the opportunity for salvation, the gift of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the torture, the suffering, the death that He endured for us, the undeserving. Lord, let that be a reminder to us every day that we awake and every night that we retire. That your love sustains us. That your providence fills our lives, Lord. And that because of this, we must be thankful. Not just once a year, but every morning, every night, every meal, every time. So we feel you, we see you, we experience your love, your grace, your mercy. Let thanksgiving flow in every word and every deed that we do. We ask this in your most precious name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi, this is Kedron. Our prayer team is faithfully waiting to hear from you, whether it's struggling from financial distress, sickness, or anything with loved ones. Please send your prayers to prayers at sunrise-vv.org. Again, that's prayers at sunrise-vv.org. Have a blessed week.